All right, guys, you kept hearing me say repeatedly in this chapter that we will come back to previous examples and fill in any socks that we left blank because at the time we first did these examples, we didn't know the socks. If we go back to example one, our very first example from this chapter, uh, we had daily protein intake with athletes. And at the time, all we knew was that last S there. We didn't know anything about shape, outliers, or center. And we have all of that now. So let's, let's go figure out what we got going on here. So in terms of shape, if we remember with a stem and leaf plot, what I wanna do is turn it 90 degrees, and I'll do it on all three of these. I turn it 90 degrees so that I have a legitimate x-axis here, and I, I see that the, the numbers are going low to high as my finger moves left to right, that's a good thing. If I was gonna try and draw a little distribution over this, you'd see it would be skewed right. Yeah. And then if I go over to the high-low version, right? If I drew a little stem and leaf, we're still looking at something that skews right. All right, so we got two skews right, and then we got to have a combo. All right, so you might be looking at this, and you might be saying, "Hey, if we head over here, this does not skew right. This skews left." But I need you to look at this. Take a look at your x-axis. As I move left to right my numbers are not going low to high, they're going high to low, and that is a problem. So if you have a stem and leaf plot and you rotate it 90 degrees, and you look at the shape, and if you look at this right now, it looks skewed left, yeah? you have to flip what that skewing would be. So anything that skews left, when the stems go high-low, it's actually a skewed right distribution. Anything, if I had a high-low and it skewed right, it would actually be a skewed left distribution. It always flips. It's the opposite of what you think it might be. If something is roughly symmetric, it flips and stays roughly symmetric. So let me go ahead and fill that in here. So as I move over to this last S, or I should say this first S, we're gonna go ahead and say this skews to the right. So in all three of those stem and leaf plots, they were skewing right. The first two we saw exactly, and the, this third one, this, this one where they did two stems for, excuse me, two leaves for every stem, it looked skewed left, but because the number line was going in the wrong order, we had to switch what we were saying and skew it right. All right, the next one is outliers. So if I'm talking about outliers, I need to build the safety zone. Before I build a safety zone, I'm gonna go put all of this data in my list and crunch one bar stats. So let's get going on this. Let me go ahead, see what's in my list. I think I gotta clear it out. And here we go. All right, I've got some data in there. I am gonna do a quick check. I'm seeing that the 21st data point or 21st um, cell entry is blank. That's good, I only had 20, um, 20 athletes in my sample. So let's go find this IQR. Let's see, let's see what we're going, I got, or what we're doing. I gotta build a safety zone. I'm gonna go back to my home screen, stat, calc, and we're gonna put in L1 and see what pops back out. So right away I see my mean of 1.985, um, but let's go take a look at the rest of this. So I've got Q1 at 1.65 and Q3 at 2.3. And I wanna hone in on those because I'm about to build a safety zone. So I'm gonna write really tiny here and start to build my safety zone. So the first thing I need to do is find the IQR, and that's gonna be Q3 minus Q1. All right, so let's see, what would Q3 minus Q1 be? I would have 2.3 minus 1.65. So 2.3 minus 1.65 will give me 0.65. All right, step two. It's gonna say, take your IQR and multiply it by 1.5. So when I take this number and I multiply it by 1.5, I'm gonna get a nice ugly decimal. What do we got? 0.975. All right, now I gotta build my safety zone. 
So I want to take Q1 and subtract 0.975, and I want to take Q3 and add 0.975. And even just now, I, I can't quite remember what Q1 and Q3 are. I didn't write them down. So let me go run one of our stats again and remind myself. All right, so I've got Q1 at 1.65. So here I want to do Q1 minus 0.975, All right, which in this case would be 1.65 minus 0.975. And on the flip of that, I would like to take Q3 and add 0.975 to it. I'm going to kind of um, boil over into the, the, the cell for the center, but it's fine. So Q3 in this case was 2.3, and I'm going to add 0.975 to it. All right, so let's see what our bounds are. 1.65 minus 0.975 is 0.675. And then 2.3 plus 0.975 is 3.275. All right, so I know this is all jammed in tight in here, but my safety zone is from 0.675 to 3.275. So let's go see if we have any outliers. Again, I'm gonna run some one bar stats. I think it's a good way to start. So let's see what the min is. The min is 1.4. If I look at my minimum or my lower bound for my for my safety zone, it was 0.675. So 1.4 is definitely in the safety zone. I got no outliers there. If I look at my max, it was three. Three is also safely inside that safety zone. So I got none. All right. I don't have any outliers in this data set. In terms of center, I could use either the mean or median. I'm just gonna use the median. So I'm seeing 1.85. and I'll put some units on it. We had grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Okay, so there are my socks for example one. All right, in example two, we were looking at back-to-back -back stem and leaf plots, or sometimes they're referred to as comparative stem and leaf plots. Um, we had pregnancy rates uh, for the Western states and the Eastern states. So let's, let's go try and do this. When we were here last, all we had enough room, or all we had enough knowledge for, I should say, was the spread, all right? And I, I mentioned it then, but I'll re-mention it. Anytime you're comparing two data sets, I want you to use comparative language. And when I say comparative language, I, I, I want you to put something in there about this spread is larger than that one, or this median is smaller than that one. They both have this in common. They don't have this in common. Something to that effect. I want comparative language. So let's start with shape. All right, let's go east and west on shape. I'll start with east. So let me move this back down, okay? I've got a stem and leaf plot. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees, all right? At least for the eastern states. Now, if I look at the eastern states, if I take a look at this, I'm looking at my x-axis. It is going low to high as I move left to right. So if I tried to draw a kind of fake curve over that, a fake distribution, to me, that looks a little bit skewed left, okay? Um, I could see the argument to say it's roughly symmetric if we really wanna put the rough in roughly symmetric, but I wanna be super clear, this is not skewed right. So that would be an incorrect answer and I would accept the other two. All right, so let me go fill that in. So for the, east, the eastern states, I've got that my shape is skewed left. All right, now let's go figure out the shape for the Western states. The Western states is a little bit funkier, right? We've got this back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot. So now I gotta rotate it clockwise 90 degrees. All right, and, and if you see what's happening, as you look left to right, your numbers are decreasing, right? I need to increase as I go left to right. This is a backwards looking stem and leaf plot. So if I try and draw the graph or the distribution over this, oh, I missed that number. That's about what I got going on there. Now, I would say at, this looks roughly symmetric to me. I could see the argument for skewing left because the left tail is a little bit longer than the right tail. So I wanna be clear. I think that I'm gonna call this roughly symmetric, but I could see the argument that this was skewed left. I wanna put the asterisks on this. If you were gonna tell me this is skewed left, 
you would be incorrect because this x-axis is going in descending order, right? We need to increase our values as we move left to right on the x-axis. So if you think this is skewed left, you would actually have to flip what you're saying and tell me it's skewed right. If you go the other way, if you just say, hey, this is roughly symmetric, when you flip being roughly symmetric, you stay roughly symmetric. So in terms of the shape here, I could see someone saying roughly symmetric, or you could say skewed right. What you could not say was skewed left. This is definitely not a skewed left, skewed left distribution. You could also find out uh, the mean and median and, and figure out for sure, is it skewing right or skewing left? Because again, if the mean is larger than the median, you're skewed right. If the mean is smaller than the median, you've skewed left. All right, for outliers, we gotta build our safety zone. So let's start getting that data into your calculator. I gotta find an IQR. So I'm gonna do this. I already put my data into my calculator because it's a bunch of data points. You can see I have the eastern states, excuse me, the western states in L1 and the eastern states in L2. So let me go run the western states. Let me do one of our stats for L1 and keep track of Q1 and Q3. So we got 53 and 64. So I'm gonna put Q1 here. I'll tell myself it's 53. Q3 here is 64. So let me go build the safety zone. The first thing I want is the IQR. So the IQR in this case is 64 minus 53. So I'm looking at 11. The next thing I want to do is take that number, multiply it by 1.5. And if I take 11 and I multiply that by 1.5, I am looking at 16.5. All right, to build the actual safety zone, I want to go ahead and do Q1 minus 16.5, and I want to do Q3 plus 16.5. So that will be 53 minus 16.5, and this will be, what, 64 plus 16.5? So let's see what those numbers are. We've got 53 minus 16.5 is 36.5. And we've got 64 plus 16.5, and that is 80.5. All right, here's my safety zone. I'm also, I'm going to run one of our stats again, just so I can try and figure out what the max and min are. So let me rerun one of our stats. All right, we had 42 and 78 for the min and max. All right, if I look at 42, my lowest number, it's inside my safety zone, so I don't have to worry about it. 78, also inside my safety zone, so I have no outliers. Okay. All right, let's go do the same thing, but we'll do it for the eastern states. So I gotta build an IQR. I gotta multiply it by 1.5. I gotta subtract it from Q1, and I gotta add it to Q3. So let's see what this is. All right, if I run one of our stats, now I'm gonna do it for the L2 data. All right, so I have a Q1 of 45, and I have a Q3 of 63. All right, if I do the IQR, we're looking at 63 minus 45, so I've got 18. All right, so let's start to put this into play. We've got uh, 68 minus 45, which was 18. I'm gonna take one and a half times 18. And it looks like it's 27. I'm gonna subtract Q27 from Q1, add it to Q3. So I'm looking at 45 minus 27, and I'm looking at, what, 63 plus 27. So when I crunch those, all right, 45 minus 27 is 18. And 63 plus 27 is 90. All right, so there is my safety zone, okay? So again, I'm gonna take a look at one of our stats 
see if I can figure out what the max and min are here and then compare it. So let me rerun one of our stats off of L2 and see what was my min, um, 32 to 72. All right, 32, well within the safety zone. 72, well within the safety zone. So again, we have no outliers here. All right, let's go get those centers. I have the center for L2 here, where was it? It was the median, we had 57. All right, so I will do median, I will do 57 pregnancies per 100,000 people. 100,000 teens, excuse me. Um, I didn't copy down the center for the West State, so let me run that again. Good old one of our stats. You can never run it too many times. And it looks like we've got 57.5. Okay, and you might be thinking, oh sweet, I'm done. You're not. Uh, it's never done, isn't, isn't that always the case? So when I say, how would you compare? You still owe me three sentences. All right, so we would compare. We would say the shape of the western states is roughly symmetric, whereas the shape for the eastern states skews left. So I want to use comparative language. So you're going to hear me say the phrase, whereas. Okay. So let's try this. So the shape. for the western states is roughly symmetric whereas the shape for the eastern states skews left So we've got that comparative language. And when I see comparative language, I'm talking about the word whereas. So we've got whereas in that sentence. And I'm just going to mark that because I want to make sure that we're clear about comparative language. So we've got whereas. All right. Now in terms of outliers, let's compare. All right. I noticed that they have this in common that neither has outliers. So I will say neither plot, neither distribution has outliers. So neither plot has outliers. And you could have said plot, you could have said distribution, you could have said data set. But the comparative language here is the word neither. If I look at their centers, right, we got 57.5 compared to 57. Those are really close numbers. And when I take into account the standard deviation, right, the standard deviation is about 9.5. And I mention that because these only deviate by about 0.5. And I think this was, what deviation was this? This was for the Western states data. So all of the Western states, they, they deviate from this, or from the mean by about 9.5. And just relatively speaking, deviating by 0.5, all right, when one of the distributions, standard deviations is 9.5, let's see what the standard deviation for L2 was. Gosh, it was 11, right? So we got 9.5 and 11. These are only off by 0.5. That just isn't that much. So I'm going to say the centers are really similar. They're very similar to one another. So these centers are very similar to one another. Okay. So in this problem, I'm not actually quoting any socks. I'm comparing the distributions. Right? So I've got neither happening in or neither plot has outliers. They are sim they have similar centers. One skewed left where the other was roughly symmetric. One of the ranges was smaller than the other. 
So there's actually no numbers quoted in any of my write-up. It's comparative language. All right, the next example we took a look at was uh, the number of male partners that these raccoons had. Um, and at the time, if I scroll up here to the information I had, all I was able to answer again was just this, this last S, this spread and range. So we can fill in the other three now. Let's go ahead and try it. In terms of shape, if I'm looking at this histogram that I've made, I can see it's clearly skewed right. So let me go and fill that in here, that I have a skewed right distribution. Okay. The next one is outlier, so yeah, I'm gonna go get a safety zone. And I, I just wanna show you a, a different way of crunching these numbers. And let me show you the, the one that's most common and that I could imagine you do many times and it totally works. I would imagine you'd put all 29 numbers into L1 and then run one of our stats L1. Great. I just want to show you a different approach. So what if you did it this way? And I say, what if you did it this way? Because what if you had a frequency distribution? What if I put the values of my variable in L1 and the frequencies in L2? I just want to show you a different way of getting the mean and median, okay? So if I do that, I can do one of our stats and I can put L1 like I normally would. But if you have your frequencies put into L2, you need to inform your calculator that your frequencies are there and you separate those out with a comma. And if you remember, our comma is above our seven key. So if I push my calculator up for a moment, I'm gonna hit this comma and I'll push my calculator back down and then I'm gonna do comma L2. So I wanna be super clear here. If you entered all 29 data points in here, you would not put the L2 because you wouldn't have any frequencies. You would want all of these frequencies to be one. You would want each data value represented once. I want this data value represented 18 times, this data value represented five times, this one three times, this one three times. And when you have your frequencies in L2, you can separate that, that L1, L2 with a comma, and I'm gonna hit enter. And here come all of my data values. Now ultimately, all I wanna do is build an IQR. So we're looking, we got Q1 is one and Q3 is two. So I'm gonna just put this off to the side and it's time to go build our safety zone. So let's try this. Let me move this up so we can all see it. All right. That looks pretty good. All right, so here we go for the IQR. We've got Q3 minus Q1. So in this case, that was two minus one, which was one. I'm gonna take one and a half times that number. And when I do one times 1.5, I'm gonna get 1.5. I'm gonna subtract that number from Q1 I'm gonna add that number to Q3 and build my safety zone. So Q1 was one. When I go one minus 1.5, I actually get to a negative 0.5. When I do Q3, two plus 1.5, I get to 3.5. So my safety zone is built between negative 0.5 and 3.5. All right, so the values of my variable, one, two, three, and four. One is in the safety zone, two is in the safety zone, Three is in the safety zone, but four is outside of the safety zone. So I do have an outlier. The data value of four raccoons is an outlier. Okay. All right, in terms of center, just cause, all right, I've been using a lot of medians. Let me just try the mean right now. So I'm gonna go 1.69. All right, so my sample mean is 1.69 raccoons. Oops, and I can't spell raccoons correctly. All right. And you could just as easily, or just as easily, excuse me, you could just as easily have wrote that the median was one raccoon. Totally acceptable answer. Okay, so the last example that we wanna go fill in our socks for is example six. Um, and this was the data for the Oregon hospitals, the cost to charge ratios. And in example six, the first time around, we were building a regular box plot. 
So we had not modified it yet to show outliers. We did that when we revisited it. So when we first saw this data set, we were able to answer a few of the questions. I was able to answer the question about spread and about center, but you'll see here shape and outliers are left empty. Now, when we revisited this problem on the next page, all right, when you see example six revisited, we actually did go through and crunch the safety zone, determine that observation 100 was an outlier. We just didn't go back and fill it in on the table here, so I'm going to. So here I'm gonna say observation, so 100% is an outlier. All right, so in terms of the shape, when I look at the shape here, these two tails are roughly the same length, or you can say the right half of the data has the same spread, roughly speaking, as the left half of the data. So if I was looking at this, I would definitely say this was roughly symmetric. And just so we can make sure we solidify another concept, let's say you weren't sure. You, you were like, well, or does it skew? Which way does it skew? Now I put my data into my list, L1. So what you could do is you could run one var stats, L1, and take a look at the mean here, right? The mean is 70.64 or 70.65. All right, and take a look at how close this is to the median. Let me write this here. <coughs> Excuse me. So the mean is 70.65%. Right, so I hope you can see how close numerically this mean and median are, right? They're super close. Now, we still don't know, if you, if you look, they're off by about 0.35%. We don't know, is that, is that a lot, is that a little? Well, let's go look at the standard deviation. So they deviate from each other by just a little, right, 0.35%. And when you compare that to the standard deviation of 14, that's nothing, right? This deviation is nothing compared to the standard deviation. So again, I would roll with this distribution, this graph is roughly symmetric. If you wanted to commit to a way of skewing, since the mean is smaller than the median, you could say this was slightly skewed left, but really you're better off saying roughly symmetric.